Are we on? Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, welcome to uh, Philosophy and Live Life. This is weird. Currently, uh, we have two uh, cell phones aiming at me t- at two different locations, so it's not very well planned. So once in a while, I'll look this direction, and once in a while, I'll look at that direction. Okay. And um, um, so uh, we talk about Instagram sessions, uh, or it now is the live Facebook sessions right now as well. Um, so anyone who if follow me on Facebook, then actually for Sniffy, not me personally, okay? Um, you can watch it on Facebook now. Um, and Noah and I were talking about our live session, and then he mentioned something um, uh, pretty useful for me to do the live session. Um, it's in the beginning, maybe I'll just take five minutes-ish to get people to get on rather than I'll just jump on the gun and then start the tea and then you know people join two minutes afterwards well a second what kind of tea are you drinking today <laughs> you know so right now um, if you want to oh for those people who have the teas today um, take your time to prepare your tea table tea and hot water cups and stuff and then for those of you who are simply watching, then I want to open up this uh, time for you guys to ask questions. How about that? Any kind of tea questions that come through your mind, maybe happened yesterday, last week, whatever, um, you can ask it right now. And so we'll use this kind of time and then we'll close the session with something like this too. And so people are not in a hurry to like quickly brew tea with me because I can do it pretty uh, fast. <laughs> yeah, and so, um, any question just ask okay and also um, we come up with a very uh, uh, some sort of uh, Instagram live session just some of it is um, uh, Noah wants me to incorporate my travel tea journey stories um, he noticed that I love telling stories in the shop uh, which I do and I think our dear customer friend Sean in the East Coast also wants me to write a book just on stories. <laughs> and then, um, so I will just put it in the live session and I think it will be really fun to maybe single out a tea um, and then we will uh, talk about the farmer or the producer or tea roaster, how I met them, uh, for example, and what kind of fun story I have with them. And I think that will be a very good uh, way to do Instagram live session as well, or Facebook live session. Sorry, I didn't mention this part because I'm not using to uh, uh, doing Facebook live session. This is the first time. So I hope a lot of people are on board right now. Yes, one question, I think. Borchik asks, uh, storage, what's the best way to store oolong? Tin, porcelain, uh, clay etc okay um very good question and um for well there are different sayings though like i noticed that a lot of tea people some tea people in taiwan they actually use tin to store um like all the oolongs i saw that but more of uh in a sharp setting though i'm not sure if they do that um in their house um and then to to most of the time that I see to age your oolong is they use a earthware, um, like earthenware stone, kind of a tea, you know, container, pretty big. Um, Cause in Taiwan, people don't age a small amount of tea by the way. Um, so if you are thinking to age one ounce of tea, um, I think just go ahead and drink it up. I think there's not enough volume to be aged. Um, Because Chinese people talk about tea energy a lot, that kind of a quantity is, I don't think is enough. So if you can have enough tea to contain the energy in there, uh, should do that. Um, For oolong, as far as I see in Taiwan, uh, since, because right now I don't really um, store a lot of uh, aged oolong by myself yet. I do have bags, but I just put them in the in the, those kind of really thick foil bag for now because I'm trying to bring them back uh, for people to touch them up for me. So anyway, back to the, because I kind of drip quite a lot too, uh, back to the question, is is a glazed stoneware, pretty thick, 
and then they will put a huge amount of a uh, huge amount like 20 pounds for example of a roasted oolong and then they will wax seal it and don't touch their tea for uh, for many years in a row uh, farmers don't tend to pay that, that kind of detailed attention so they just put it in a bag and then take it out once in a while to re roast it um, there are debates on the method some people really think there's a bad thing to do to the tea and some people think that's the right way to do to the tea you know um personal wise i i own i use that the smaller containers like to uh to open up my heavy roasted tea actually because some of the heavy roasted teas that the time to wait for it maybe is a year or so to drink the tea and it's just like don't have that kind of patience and kind of in the eager to see how it can open so sometimes i'll put it in a porcelain jar uh some of like more for example our really super strong full roast charcoal don't think <laughs> waiting for a year is uh, pretty painful especially when you are already out of the previous crop you don't want it to speed up to open then i'll put it in a porcelain jar and i hope the answers will help you any more questions uh, so not necessarily vacuum sealed airtight bags. Someone asked about vacuum sealed bags. Um, so as you probably noticed, I've been talking about roasted oolongs and aged oolongs quite a lot. Um, for fresh oolongs, um, if you buy a huge quantity from certain vendors or from different vendors, um, just open one bag at a time and the rest of the bags do leave them in the, in the um, what is that, the vacuum bag. But the first bag and first harvest bag after you open it, the same thing, allow it to open though, you will notice within a week that tea is gonna shift. So a lot of people say drink tea fresh, fresh, like like right away, um, I think right away then you taste the foundation, later you do, even like really fresh, you know, green tea, sometimes a day or two, it really opens up. So I really heavily suggest you guys to uh, to pay attention to how a tea opens up. Almost like your wine at home, you know, you want it to open up. And then different style of wines open up in a different speed. And if you can pay attention to that, to tea, you will know how to wait for a tea to open up as well. So vacuum, yes, if you have a lot of, uh, you know, your high mountain oolongs that's not roasted, your baozhongs, your green teas, uh, I think vacuum back to store a lot of bags on the side. That's a that's a very good habit. Yeah. Yes. Do you think oolongs that are set aside for aging should be re-roasted after a few years if they taste aged? Um. That will depends on how sensitive you are with tea energy. So and it also depends on if that tea. It, the tea started as a really light oolong and nobody ever touched it up. I think maybe a little bit fire to get rid of a, get rid of a staleness. It's, it's, it's helpful. Um, for those uh, tea masters in Taiwan that who are very sensitive to tea energy, they, a lot of them practice to age a oolong that is uh, really strong roasted teas. Um, I'm looking at the camera a little bit more because that camera asks a little bit more questions. <laughs> yeah, nobody, because I, I, we didn't announce the Facebook stuff anyway. So, <laughs> so I'm going to like focus on this uh, on Instagram uh, friends uh, for today a little bit more. Um, um, so anyway, back to your question. That it's there's a few masters that I I met on a journey that they that, that don't believe in retouching up the tea. They think it will stir the stir up the tea energy. But once again, how sensitive are you to those things? I think they have been into tea and then like qigong practice, tai chi, whatever, you know, those kind of stuff, Taoism for like fifty years. They are extremely sensitive. Um um so you got to use your own um you know, taste profile, you will, you will, I, I mean, what you can taste to determine if you want to do the next step to the tea or not. Most practice is people touch up the tea a little bit. Yeah. So are we all good? Can we start the tea now? Okay, good. Wow, a lot of questions. I didn't expect this. Let's, uh, let's move on to the teas. Uh, for those of you who have our teas, um, that you bought the sampler package, please uh, open the Lisan 
High Mountain Tie Guan Yin. We'll start with that tea. And you can still ask questions, okay, when I'm brewing tea. I'm very uh, used to that. On Instagram, we can tell if people are watching. Can you tell how people are? Oh, cool. Yeah, we didn't announce that. We just thought we should do that too. Some people ask us to launch it on Facebook too. Yeah. Uh, Li San Tie Guan Yin to start. Is that correct? Yes. We'll yes. do the Li San Tie Guan Yin. If you buy the sampler package, we, we send you two samples of uh, Tie Guan Yin. Both are high mountains. We'll start with the Li San Tie Guan Yin. And we have actually have this tea probably in the shelf for a year now, and I'm pretty excited to taste it today. Um, a lot of our teas shift, like, um, uh, for example, Boy Chi noticed that, because uh, she's a big fan of our Dong Ding and me too. <laughs> uh, Dong Ding traditional chocolate roast Dong Ding and, and, and stuff. Normally I try to buy traditional A enough volume to uh, last it for like let's say eight months to a year worth of a stock. Uh, charcoal roast Dong Ding, I have no control on that. The charcoal master roast only minimum amount. So when we get it, it can be sold out in like a few weeks sometimes that like, I have a crop it just sold out. Like so fast, I actually hold a quarter pound for myself. What happened to these teas, these rosy teas, um, they can actually become better. So sometimes when you have a, a good traditional down roasted dong ding, you know, uh, you can hold on to them for a little bit and really see how they shift, that like different dimensions will show up. And I found it extremely um, interesting and beautiful. And I am seriously betting that this uh, this Li San Tie Guan Yin is gonna show up some different notes or some different uh, texture and, and stuff. Hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome. People listening to you right now as well. Oh yeah, we're on live session right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. It's like Hello, to... everybody. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very regular customer. He loves our Yunnan Go. <laughs> I've been buying Yunnan Go for years. Uh, from the Instagram side, um, Noah is currently step aside to uh, help a customer to buy Yunnan Go. So if you ask questions right now. Um, I will not know. So it's not that I refuse to answer because I don't know you are asking. Ms. Tai, Ms. Tai. Yes. What do we do about accepting credit cards? What? Because both of the phones are being used for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, hold on. I think I do because I just went to the bank. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Take a hundred? Yeah, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> Didn't even think about that. We have to figure out a. Don't worry, everybody. A work <laughs> Yeah, both of our, um, so we use a square payment with our cell phone to uh, process credit card here and both of the cell phones are in action right now. And so it's like, uh, I was like, what kind of question is this? <laughs> Where's your calculator? Not yet. And after you pour the tea, please smell the surface smell of the tea. You are going to smell the, the varietal and the processing quite a lot before you take a sip. It should be 75 in there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Should I, should I count it? Maybe a good idea. Uh, Do you want 20s? Do you want 20s? You have 20s? Yeah, I have 20s. Do you want 20s? No, it's all right. Okay, cool. Thank 
you so much. Thank you. Enjoy the day. Bye-bye. So as I said, I have probably owned this tea for a year now, maybe or half a year. Nowadays, I have so many different crops of tea, I really start to, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, <laughs> lose track of uh, exactly when I pour the tea in but even six months this tea has no sign of staleness um, I think it's shifting now because when we first got it the body wouldn't open up for me and now I think the body is opening up now opening up now so sometimes when I have tea like this um, uh, in a way when it first didn't sell I don't I don't quite worry because first of all they will not go stale they only develop and so after they deliver, develop a little bit more then I can introduce it uh, to customers who like these style teas and after the body opened up you know and then after you uh, uh, already drink the cup of tea you can smell the empty cup you can smell um, the clarity and the structure of the smell of a tea and then in the future, we are going to talk a little bit more on that. I'm not going to say too much about it right now because I will go on for like, um, I plan to uh, end the session in 40 minutes today. Because <laughs> last time mountain session went too long and then the, the Instagram just shut us down. So. <laughs> so let's do the second infusion. Sean says this tea always reminds me of Hong Shui with a bit of Gui Fei. Ah, Gui, maybe more on the Gui Fei. Mm. Yes, there's a huge honey and fruit, uh, sweet fruit, uh, sweetness. It's very enjoyable. Maybe it got it, it maybe it got a take by T Jesses too. Who knows? You know, I mean, it's not like the T Jesses only like <laughs> a take and turn into like oriental beauty and great fair. They actually sometimes do high mountain oolong too. Uh, Brewing Charcoal, uh, Brewing Master told me that his fairy tea will be a winter high mountain oolong that got attacked by these tea jessies. So I have been keeping my eyes open. If they ever come across to my path, I am going to drink that tea and see what he's saying. <laughs> Todd said he loves Lee Sun teas. Oh yes, oh, I love Lisan tea. Lisan tea is so buttery to me. Um, which ta? Aren't you at work? <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. All, probably all of you guys are supposed to be at work. And I am at work too, but this is my job. So for those of you, who are actually currently at work and doing this with me. Thank you so much. I love you all. <laughs> we have Doug today. We introduced Doug. Yes, uh, Doug is our uh, long-term customer friend who just lived like, seriously, two blocks away. <laughs> and then he's also, uh, uh, no, those of you who uh, follow me either on Facebook or Instagram, you will see him taking his photos, so he's one of our wonderful photographer friends who, uh, who supply us uh, beautiful photos. You guys can, uh, is your website going on? No, okay, so never Douglas mind. Douglas King Photography on Instagram. Yes, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh, uh, Lazy Literata said, I didn't know that Lee San and Ali San farmers were we're making Taiwanese styles. Are they from Taiwanese cultivars? Yeah, so all the Taiwanese tea that we bring in, we don't necessarily carry Taiwanese tea that follow Taiwanese method, just like our Dongding is not Dongding from elsewhere that follow Dongding uh, method. We like to go for the varietal too. So if you notice, this is actually Compared to Muja, this is uh, a little bit on the lighter side. 
So if you want to talk about tradition, some people might argue this is not traditional enough. And it's not, because it's not very deep. Okay, like the, like the um, Muzha Tie Guan Yin. But the varietal is the Zhen Chong Tie Guan Yin, the True Bush Tie Guan Yin. Yeah. And whoever um, have the tea today and is doing the session with me, or even tomorrow when you come across to this session, because um, today, you know, like, <laughs> like your tea haven't arrived yet. I know one of your tea haven't arrived or you are actually currently not with us because you are working right now and then you will be watching it maybe during the weekend with our teas and stuff. Um, I want to invite you to uh, pay attention how much the tea, um, not energy, okay? The moment you are swallowing the tea, I want to invite you to see how far the tea can go inside the body and just pay attention to that. And if you can feel or anything, it's okay. This is the door that I want to open for you. That's about it, okay? Focus. Pay a little bit of attention and see if you can feel anything. morning you know everybody it's Tuesday morning <laughs> so for those of you who are drinking this tea I found this tea very pleasant the body is medium it's spray out just enough that it's not the texture is not boring and then it has a a certain puffiness that I'm actually enjoying it. and then when it comes to the body um, it just move a little bit this tea actually couldn't move all the way down and there's a reason for it because this tea people the people the person who made it I don't think he has the intention or the capacity to make the tea moving inside of your stomach so just to keep it in mind but it's overall is it a good tea i think so i think it's a very place and it got a whole picture of good flavor nice body enough salivation that you can taste it afterwards i think it's a very pleasant tea just just almost to the chest area only and it got stuck right here because there's not enough power to move it down are you tired today no i said i'm watching it last night <laughs> After yeah. you guys left, we had a we had a tea tea party, and after you guys left, I watched like seven episodes <laughs> of Atlanta and drank drank my whiskey. Oh my god! Yeah. Um. Yesterday we um. I'm going to post some of the photos later on on Instagram and Facebook. We have our first uh uh private club meeting. Um, Experimenting with charcoal, using charcoal to brew tea. To brew tea, and then using a uh brew master's method. Uh, to brew tea and then we drank four pretty potent teas and it was extremely fun um, and I think we hit that pool a little bit on the late side yeah like 6 p.m. and and, and then we wouldn't give up that tea but we were so hungry that we actually had to stop and to go and grill some food and then we crazily all simultaneously decided because I asked that stupid question should we stew this tea when we are barbecuing and then everybody's like yes <laughs> it was a really strong green pour and it was like only we only steeped it like three times yeah and then so the number four infusion I put some hot water in there and I put it on the actually with the hot water open 
and then to let the part sit there so it's actually still heat supporting it so for the whole time the tea has been brewed for like over an hour and then and then we add some food and finally you know have food in our belly and we drink that sip of tea it was so strong but you can sense the energy that's the fun part of it and then i think we are so addicted to it because we're like do you think there's more energy left <laughs> here we go we're back yeah cool oh so do we lose the previous one no 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 no, no. i didn't i didn't stop it and start it again it just paused for a little bit but we're back now oh okay i had to connect to uh the big wi-fi <laughs> yeah the phone signal is very tricky here either you do it with wi-fi or your own signal that can be all very connecting and disconnecting So today, I the point of uh, this tea session is to um, to let you guys see a better tea have more to offer. They will move further. They will have bigger energy also in your body. And there's a second tea that when you guys are ready, take your time though. I'm slowly cleaning out my um, um, teapot. And the second tea, when you guys are ready, just uh, pour out. Um, I think we wrote it down as Mr. Light's High Mountain Tia Guan Yin. It's uh, produced pretty close to Ali San. That's what he said. So sometimes we, we'll, I think on the bed we might call it Ali San Tia Guan Yin, but I think all these sessions, the what whoever order samples, we call it Mr. Light's uh, uh, Ali San Tia Guan Yin. Oh, High Mountain Tia Guan Yin. I'm sorry. I think I might have called it both. Yeah, so it might be both, so yeah. don't panic. Both are the same tea. <laughs> so while I'm getting stuff ready, or you are getting stuff ready as well, uh, I will talk briefly about Mr. Lai. Um, I met him for the first time. <coughs> Uh, I think last year in July, when I went back with uh, Jake to film the documentary, um, the reason why I, f I wanted to film him is he is one of uh, Chaco Master's students, and he's the only one who actually um, using what he learned and then open a tea business with it. Uh, I think the other people, they just learn it, and then maybe they are practicing at home, or abandon their practice, whatever reason, that none of them actually open business besides this guy. So I thought he would be a good person to interview and to, to you know, for to talk about his teacher, like his learning journey with his teacher and, and stuff. Mm. And last year, the session, I think the, the, the biggest thing that he taught me is about tea has a good tea have to have a frame just like human body has a frame and the moment you can identify the frame you can go into the center then you can express it as a tea roaster and as a tea brewer and so today i'm hoping that just by comparing these two teas that you were able to see some teas does on a higher clarity and it's very fascinating and I think his personality shows up in the tea is he's a very um, detailed and very clear person. He likes things extremely clean and clear. And so he's looking for tea like that and it shows up in his roasted tea. So the next tea that we are going to drink um, actually got charcoal fire by him. Even though it doesn't show up very strongly, um, it does got touch up by him. So, and he's only doing a uh, organic and or organic wild grown teas. He said he's too sensitive uh, with um, pesticide and chemicals because one time when he was uh, roasting uh, tea with uh, in the beginning when he started to learn to roast tea he didn't pay enough attention to see if the tea 
was organic or not and he actually passed out one time in the tea roasting room got sent to hospital and the, the doctor confirmed that it was a little bit poisoned by the uh, chemicals that come out to the tea from the tea and so this next tea is very clean um, he only he will visit the farms and work with farmers that that that, that um, don't use pesticide I notice uh Tequanian tea will open up quite a lot. So visually in the volume I put in a little bit less right now than my usual um roll up style oolong Thai mountain. I might put a little bit more, but you see I actually like even the previous one I didn't put uh as much as before. It it show up so much to my surprise. So this one I'm putting mm, maybe just five grams actually which is uh, actually a very low quantity for me to put uh, to brew tea. And for Tae Guan Yin, since it's his tea, he actually likes that that smell that they will penetrate into your brain he said you can actually also use brewing method um, to do that so if you can do it when you pour hot water in um, try if you can that's fine nobody can see you anyway I, I can't see you so <laughs> how you pour out the water do the water style the pour into the pot higher and skinnier like softer water flow into the and then into the part the the broth is gonna show trust me or you you do it the second infusion do it like really quick pouring and then really high lift your parts and then try it see if you notice the difference i'm going to just stop right there okay sean says whoa this tea runs circles around the other one. Oh, <laughs> that is fun i haven't drank it yet let me see what kind of circle i'll be running okay <laughs> normally it's, i run the circles around the tea it shows my level <laughs> So even the surface smell, there's, uh, there's something more try to get up into your nose. That's very interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. And then for those of you who are currently drinking this tea, um, see how it actually can move inside the body. And for those of you who can sense energy, like, like, right away one sip and it, it just start to f i started to feel something in my legs it's that fast i think a powerful tea is extremely fast to show the energy side of it um for those of you who think that you cannot experience tea energy if you are sensing the tea this tea right now you are experiencing its energy i don't think it's the caffeine yet or unless you are sensing the previous tea's caffeine then there's a possibility So if you guys want to just look at the tea, not inside the body yet, let's look at it at the mouth. There's a, almost, almost a creaminess in the, in the tea and then the texture of the tea link way more. It's like there's a whole picture of the, the, the creaminess and it spread out way more than the previous one. And then you, you, don't, you don't even need to swallow the tea to see its whole yun. That's how spectacular this tea is. You can actually expect its whole yun. That's that angle that is aiming at the throat area. It's, for me, I just, I just drink this tea actually probably the third time right now. I just, I just brought this tea back um, um, like two weeks ago. So this is the third time that I drank this tea. I drank it with the teacher, uh, Mr. Lai, there in his store, and I, it, it the energy was so strong from his hand. It was 
really fun, actually. And I was, yeah, it moves down, right? So Doug, uh, who is helping us to uh, hold another uh, cell phone camera, it, he said this tea will it's immediately move to his stomach, you know. And for those of you, uh, even though you are not drinking this tea today with us, um, I want to invite you to any single tea that you are drinking, you know, pay attention where it's moving, not just the tea energy. And the tea broth, does it move? Does it only stay? Where is it moving? Is there a, a, is there a shape? Is there a structure? This kind of stuff is a, one of the indications of how good a tea actually is. Um, so this is what I'm saying. If you can see the camera, just, uh, oh, I mean, see me. <laughs> I mean, not see me, see the teapot. It's how, I'm, I'm doing it a bit longer. Don't do this, okay? How skinny and then the water is going down. And see how that nice delicate knot will, will lift up a little bit and the tea becomes softer. And then, in fact, the next one, let's all do it together. If you are green tea with me, let's all do it together, okay? But this one, focus on this one first. What do you guys think about this tea besides Sean? Whoever is drinking out there, let me know. Only Sean is drinking tea with me today. Well, we'll try to put uh, this video on YouTube. <laughs> and so after you have a chance to uh, drink this, tea, I think at least minimally um, six to 10 people purchase the, uh, the, the samplers to go on the live with us. And um, after you get a chance, you can uh, actually uh, leave your comment on, on uh, YouTube. Oh yeah, leave your comments on, on YouTube. Tell us what you think about the tea. It doesn't mean I'll go in to look at it right away though. <laughs> I'm not very good with technology and there's too many of them right now. Sean says, yeah, and I'm not even in the mood for tea. <laughs> and, and then Erica says, I would, but I don't have the tea with me yet. Which oh, it'll get there. You'll get there, okay. And okay. then... Oh, and HR Holiday also says when the tea arrives. Yeah, tomorrow, you as I know, HR Holiday, I know tomorrow is gonna arrive. <laughs> so, um, whoever is brewing tea right now, uh, get your hot water ready. Oh, you can look at me first. Let's do the low and fast and thick water coming out into the pot style and to see how the tea dimension actually change. And then after that change, see if you like that about this tea or not. It's really fun that you can actually play with this nowadays with tea. So I'll, I'll do it first if you want to look at the water uh, first, just like this, okay? Really fast and long. Here you go. This way in the future when you are brewing the tea, you are not just randomly, mechanically uh, pour water into the tea. Every step every step counts actually so we'll only start with this this side right now and then in the future um, we might talk a little bit about different style of tea brewing for different style teas to kind of maximize the personality of the tea a little bit more
I can't talk for Sean, but I can talk for myself. When, when uh, I went to Taiwan this time, I really realized how how much pay, like attention you can pay to each part of tea brewing. And I realized before when I was pouring water into the teapot, sometimes I would just do it without thinking about it at all. Yeah. Or pour the water out of the teapot into the cups, wouldn't think about it really. It's a huge difference in the broth right now. Whoever you are watching, practice your other teas at home. I mean, I practice, try it. It's, this is extremely fun. But if you have a dark tea, that might be the style that the dark tea really likes, actually. And then with the, the same pile of tea, lift it up and lower it in different infusions so you can immediately take really what shifts. Like now, the notes in the tea disappear in, in a cup by a lot of percentage. Not 100%, but really and, not clear anymore. Yeah, like 40% disappear. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. But the broth is very solid, though, and the whole yin is extremely clear right now with this infusion. That the whole yin, the throat sensation is very spectacular. That like in this infusion, it 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 almost lost the the link, but it just show up right here. So really, water pouring into the pot has a huge um, dimension change in the tea. more iron taste and so the next one which I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to look at his watch <laughs> I'm going to uh, close on one last infusion I'm going to do the the soft uh, style again And so the lightness show up again in the broth. Try it. Don't, don't listen to what I said. Try it to see if you notice the difference. And this tea does move further. I mean, the energy is much more complete. You know, it's more whole body energy. The uh, Lee San Tiago in the previous tea is a really pleasant. It's almost more, they say more... Is that the right word to say? More sensory teas here. It's beautiful here. It's like that, like you said, the honey, the the right fruit, the smoothness. Uh, it's just a very enjoyable tea. But if you are looking for something further with your teas, then the Mister Light, the charcoal, the the charcoal students, uh, uh, Mister Light's tea. Um, his tea will move, and it will offer a little bit more completion um, of of the of the dimensions and then uh, after we have our charcoal roast stone in Yin, we can see his teacher who is my favorite tea person uh, tea teacher in Taiwan that uh, his tea is even bigger than this I mean no matter how this energy is moving the energy is uh, very strong look at the frame his frame that broth is always really like on the thinner very clear side his teacher is Boom, big and unpredictable, and I think that's why I like I, I love about him. So, um, so before I exit, um, pretty soon I'll give you five minutes. <laughs> I think I passed 40, 40 minutes already. Um, five more minutes to ask questions. Nothing too personal, please. <laughs> No? Nothing so far. No questions? Okay. So, let's
that's it. And I think next section we are going to do the uh, pool, two pools from uh, Charcoal Master. And we are going to see not just the dimension of the tea, we are going to see personality as a pool. And I think I'm going to let Noah do it. So he got a nickname from Taiwan on this trip from the Masters, actually. His nickname is Handsome Boy. So I'm going to uh, little make handsome the, boy. Oh, Little Handsome Boy to make his. Uh, to make the handsome boy debut his uh, Instagram life in at Floating Lifty. Yes, one question. We have what type of pots do you like for oolongs? And oh, and then Sean's just being silly. <laughs> what kind of pots for oolongs? Ah. Uh, if you want to do uh, the lightly roasted ones, um, This is a standard shape of teapots and it might be able to show all the aspects of the tea, the body, the link, the fragrance, a little bit better, you know. The question is too big because <laughs> there are many different uh, dimensions of oolongs, by the way, you know. And then Sean said, what are we going to do when you retire? I can't Who? have them crappy tea. Sean said this. Retire? Uh. I'm... I'm um, um, I'm, I'm still fairly young <laughs> and also I don't have 401k so I'm not sure if I can retire so uh, congratulations. Good tea forever. <laughs> I might not be able to retire at all. That's really sad. <laughs> Besides these silly questions, any more real questions please? <laughs> But oolong tea, I do like to, let's not talk about the clay and the shape and stuff, okay? I do like to use a good clay because I like heat for oolong and there's a subject that we can talk about. Um, I know a lot of you guys are very cautious with water temperature, the heat. Here in this shop, we use the heat to push the tea, to make the tea bloom. And so I, as you notice, nowadays my Instagram live, um, since I didn't record any of them, Besides one, um, I used to use Sky One way more. Nowadays, with Oolong, I'm using way more clay. I need the heat to contain inside. Nowadays, we even heat it up in a. Uh, oh, yeah, let me see if I can. In my, go. this is for me, for us to spa roasting tea, and we are not doing that too often. We are actually using this between infusions to heat up the teapot with the tea inside even more. We just turn on the, and then we just put the teapot in there. The tea will just get bigger and bigger so um don't be afraid of the heat fire can be really fun <laughs> that's my message of the day and then, <laughs> and then i think that's it and so we'll see you i think in two weeks and then the little handsome boy noah is going to uh, uh talk about pools with you guys cool. thank you so much everybody thank you bye Finish. yeah i think <laughs>